Hey, Darren, it's Rod Gilmore. How are you? Great, and yourself there, Rod? I'm doing fine, thanks. It is great to be connected with you and to you and all that, and everybody knows you as this great college football analyst and broadcaster in general. Not everybody uh, realizes that you were a great athlete before that, so I'm curious what your transition from broadcaster uh, to broadcaster from being an athlete was. Wow. Um... I, I, it's hard to say that was not anything that was planned. It just sort of sort of happened. Uh, I was practicing uh, law before uh, moving into broadcasting. Still practice law uh, a little bit anyway. And so it just so happened that I was at a place in time where uh, a friend was uh, doing work and needed some sports legal uh, advice and invited me on his show. And that got me involved into broadcasting. And it kind of took off from there as I managed uh, doing that and practicing law at the same time. And at what point did it happen that the broadcasting became more of your life than the law? Uh, when I got connected with ESPN, uh, when ESPN expanded its coverage to uh, Big Ten football and got ESPN2 going, uh, that really sort of started taking up more of my time. And I not only did games, but I did studio work. So. Around 1999, 2000, uh, it really sort of took off and uh, took up uh, an awful lot of my time, and that's when it became uh, pretty much a full-time thing. Now, I forget the name of the NFL referee who's also an attorney as his main gig there, but do you encounter a lot of other people in the college or professional football worlds that are also, you know, lawyers and broadcasters, lawyers and something within football? Oh, uh, absolutely. Uh, you know, my, uh, my partner, Jason Benetti, uh, is, uh, is a lawyer, and I think a lot of people know Jay Billis uh, is also uh, a lawyer. So there, there are quite a few of us hanging around there, uh, I would say. <laughs> right, right. Well, small world right there. And, you know, shifting topics right here. Uh, people know that you had a health scare a couple of years ago, but you look great, you sound great and all that. So can you tell me a little bit more how it is that you're, you know, persevering in the name of having some illness there? Yeah, well, uh, I, some people may know, others may not, but um, I was diagnosed in 2016 with multiple myeloma, which is a blood cancer. Uh, it's an aggressive, complex uh, disease, which is marked by periods of remission and relapse. It's kind of like a roller coaster. Uh, it can be an up and down thing. Uh, it's, it varies for, for people who have it. And there was a lot I didn't know about it when I was diagnosed. I didn't know that it affects African Americans twice as much as white Americans. Uh, I didn't know the time frame and, and, and the treatments that were involved with it. And so I was uh, sort of drinking from a fire hose when I was diagnosed. And I've teamed up with Amgen because Amgen has come up with uh, the Myeloma MVP, uh, which is a, a program that helps you develop a plan for dealing with multiple myeloma. And to me, that is a huge step forward because, like I said, initially when you're diagnosed, it's, it's really overwhelming. And it's really critical to come up with a plan that works for you that can help you talk with your doctor, to figure out what you need to do and to build a team to help you manage this process over time of the ups and downs and to, to really set your goals as to what's important to you in creating that plan. Uh, how long have you been working with Amgen? Well, this is my first year and this is the program that we're really trying to get out there for people to, uh, to understand. MyelomaExplained.com is the place to go to get uh, information about it. And for me, I, I try to encourage people to, to do two things. One is to get an annual physical. Uh, as I said, I did not know anything was wrong with me, but my annual physical revealed uh, the multiple myeloma. And two, going to myelomaexplained.com. Again, that's an easier way to find out about the disease and what's going on instead of when I was diagnosed and I was drinking from a fire hose and trying to figure out just what all this disease meant and what I needed to do. Sure. Now... When somebody hears that they have myeloma, of course they're going to just think the worst. In your case, it seems like you're living a pretty normal life, so I take it that the Amgen planning and all that lets you pretty much be yourself as long as you slot in what needs to be done? Well, I, I think that's, that's kind of what the plan helps you do. Um, you need to really, first and foremost, you know, build your medical team. And, and, and part of that is uh, being able to talk to your doctor honestly and openly about what's important to you, what your priorities are, 
and, and setting your goals. And then just as important is really being able to talk to the people you need on your team. Your, for personal, the personal plan that you need will, will help you affect what you want to do. For example, do, do you want to work? Uh, at what level do you want to work? Mm -hmm. What things do you want to do socially? What things are important in your life that you want to continue doing? For me, it was important to continue uh, broadcasting and broadcasting at a high level and not uh, backing away from that. It was also important to me to continue something close to my normal exercise routine as a way of, uh, you know, handling stress and handling um, my reactions to, um, you know, having multiple myeloma. So my plan and my priorities will probably be different than someone else's, but this MVP allows you to think through and set, set these goals for yourself. And you just mentioned exercise. I don't know if you want to go into this, but what are some of the things that you do to stay healthy? Yeah, well, again, what, what I do for me may not apply to anybody else, but sure. I, I've, I've been uh, you know, an advocate of physical activity for all my life, and I did not want to change that. So I, I have a combination of, you know, CrossFit that I do, uh, uh, cardio, weightlifting. I, I change things up. Now I have to be careful with all that. And my plan for me is under the guide of, uh, you know, my physician. So I do, don't do things that I can't do or shouldn't do given my, my condition. But everyone's different. And any kind of a plan that you want to have that includes exercise really should be cleared uh, with your physician as you create your plan. And current work with Amgen aside, oh, what's coming up for you? Well, I will continue to do college football games. I will be off this weekend to broadcast another college football game, and I will continue the same routine that I've had. So uh, it's really important to me to, to do my normal thing and to live with multiple myeloma as opposed to uh, looking at the things that I can't do. I, I really have a plan that focuses on what I can do and not, not beating multiple myeloma, but living with it and that it's possible to do that. And I think that's what I want people to know, uh, that you can do that if you really think through having a plan. And myelomaexplained.com will help you get there along with the MVP plan. And a staple question here sure. for myself. What's the last concert that you went to for fun? <laughs> the last concert I went to for fun? Wow, you are really testing me there. Ah, geez, I'd have to go back. Wow. Not a concert guy, I take it. <laughs> nah, it's, it's been a while. It's been a while. Um, it was a low-key concert, um, very small. It was actually Anita Baker several years ago. Oh, she's great. Yeah, she's great. and she was fantastic. Uh, so in closing, Rod, any last words for the kids? Uh, for the kids, if it's uh, sports-related, keep doing what you're doing. For the folks out there who are thinking about how to address multiple myeloma. Again, uh, have an annual physical. Uh, I have a lot of male friends who shied away from that, and now they're telling me they're taking care of that. And two, myelomaexplained.com. Again, great information there, and it will help you figure out a plan going forward. Thank you so much for your time. Keep up the greatness. Keep up the healthiness. It's great to see you doing great, Rod. Thanks. Thanks for having me.